Hello, uh, this is our second uh, video on modes of heat transfer uh, and we'll cover convection and radiation. Okay, the second mode of heat transfer is convection, uh, which in some ways is just a, a variation on conduction. It combines conduction, that is the interaction of molecules banging against each other, uh, with the advection, with the bulk motion of fluid material. And both of those processes serve to move thermal energy from one space uh, to another. So we can talk about convection moves thermal energy, both because it's taking a whole bulk One of the key uh, aspects of convection is that it's much more effective at transferring uh, heat uh, and at reaching some kind of thermal, thermal equilibrium uh, than conduction is. Okay, So we have a rate equation for conduction here. Again, something you uh, saw in 2.11, um, where temperature difference is key, right? because that's what heat transfer is. Uh, the transfer of thermal energy because of temperature difference uh, multiplied by h and h is our conduct or, or rather our convection uh, coefficient it's very similar to k in some sense in that it uh, tells us oh the amount of heat transfer is going to be proportional to our temperature difference but h has a lot more going on in it uh, it has to do with um, materials and usually with two materials uh, with the way that the fluid is moving, with the patterns of is it laminar flow or turbulent flow. Um, there are all sorts of different ways uh, that convection works. And so H can vary uh, hugely, right, from values in the single digits up to values uh, in the tens of thousands. Um, and so H we, isn't a material component. It's, a, it's an environmental component. Uh, that we need to figure out experimentally. All right, so why are rates of conduction much higher than convection? Um, it's because that uh, Convection actually enhances conduction. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if you think about this uh, little cabin here, cute little uh, gravity furnace, um, if there were no motion, bulk fluid motion, the air right here would get really hot, right? But it would just sit there. And then you'd think, well, how much energy is leaving our furnace? Well, remember, conduction heat transfer happens because of temperature difference. If the air around this gets to be, you know, I don't know, 90 degrees Celsius, um, there's going to be a lot less heat transfer uh, from the furnace to that air, right? Because they're going to, you're going to have a hot furnace next to hot air. Uh, there's going to be less heat transfer. Um, so what does convection do? It moves that hot air away, and in this case it's called natural convection because it's doing it just because of buoyancy. Um, it takes that energy, um, or rather that hot air, and moves it away from the hot furnace, replaces it with a cold furnace, and now you've got the super hot furnace uh, with cold air next to it, and conduction is going to work much more effectively. So it's uh, partially it's effective because it's actually physically moving that air around, right? But also it's effective because it's making conduction work better. It's creating places where something really hot is next to something really cold. That's the same as when, when wind makes you feel cold. If you stand in a really still area, uh, basically the air right around your body starts to heat up a little bit. Uh, wind comes and sweeps that away uh, and now you've got nice cold air next to your skin <laughs> and you've got a brisk Midwestern winter day.
Okay, so we can do that naturally with buoyancy as in the case of this um, hot air rising here, or we can also have what's called forced convection if we had a fan there moving that air, uh, purposely creating convective effects.